Hey, my name is Ben. Today I'm going to explain linear classification. Make sure to like and subscribe if the video was helpful. To understand linear classification, we're going to first plot some data. You can see two classes, the blue and the orange class. The task is now to choose a linear function, which in 2D is simply a line, to separate both classes. The problem is, we have an infinite amount of possibilities to choose those lines. Here are three examples. The line closer to the blue class, the line closer to the orange class, and the line exactly in the middle. If we would choose the line closer to the orange class as separating function, then data points that are actually closer to the orange class might be classified as blue. The same holds for the line closer to the blue class. Hence, the best line that we could choose would be the line maximizing the distance to both classes. This is the line exactly in the middle between both classes. As usually in math, we formulate a linear function as the following. f of x equals v times x plus b. v is the slope of the linear function and b is the biased. Our goal is now to find v and b describing a linear function. To do this, we can use two easy concepts from statistics, which is the mean value for the data points in the class and the covariance of a class. The mean is quite easy to understand. Basically, it is the average vector of all the data points in a class. For example, a class with two data points consisting of two features. The first data point is the vector 1, 10, and the second data point is the vector 5, 0. Now we add up both data points and divide by 2, which is the number of data points in the class. The result is the average data point consisting of the vector 3, 5. Since covariance is a little bit trickier to explain, I'm just going to link the video about covariance in the description. On a short note, the covariance matrix of a class tells us how correlated, on average, the features of an individual data point from that class are. So let's say, if for a class all the data points follow the following structure. So that feature 2 equals 2 times feature 1. So feature 2 completely depends on feature 1. Then we can see a very high correlation between the two features. If they are always something different and do not depend on each other at all, then they are very lowly correlated. To get the parameters of a linear function v and b, we can maximize something called the Fisher criterion. It is equal to the square difference between the means of the classes divided by the covariance matrix of class 1 plus the covariance matrix of class 2. You can think about the linear function as a projection to a line. In this projection, we want to increase the differences of the means of both classes. That means we want to place the centers of the distributions as far away as possible. We also want to minimize the denominator, which means reducing the covariances of the classes in the projection. We can also reformulate the Fisher criterion so that it becomes more obvious what V plays as a role. I'm not going to show the exact reformulation steps because they're not that interesting to watch Therefore, I'm going to link to my website in the description where you can find references to the reformulation steps. So the Fisher criterion can also be reformulated as V times SV times V divided by V times SV times V. As before, SB is the square difference of the means of both classes. And SV is the average of both covariance matrices. After maximizing the Fisher criterion, we get the equations for v and b. These are very easy to implement, but keep in mind that the inverse of the covariance matrix for v takes a lot of time if you have high dimensional data. That means if each data point has a lot of features. Finally, it is important to note three things. The first one being that linear classification can actually only separate two classes at once. Imagine drawing three points of three different classes and try to separate them by a line. It is simply not possible. The second thing is that since we describe the classes using the covariances and their mean, we implicitly assume that they follow a Gaussian distribution. 
Here are two examples for which the linear classification algorithm would fail, since it is quite useless to describe those classes using their mean and covariance. The last thing to note is that, as usually in machine learning, your model can only be as good as your data allows. If your data is very poor, no matter what algorithm you're going to choose for classification, you will get poor performance. Therefore, even more important than the actual choice of the algorithm is the quality of your data set. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. If you want to see an example implementation, make sure to check out mintube.net. Link is in the description. Otherwise, make sure to like and subscribe if the video was helpful. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.